Hello mate, thanks for clicking on this video, you're watching Video Game Subscription Wars, the channel that covers every game on every video game subscription, and today we've got a brand new series called Every Xbox Game Pass Game Ranked, and I want to quickly explain my thought process for it before we get started. There are already a lot of best game lists for Xbox Game Pass out there. The thing is, they're all top 5 or top 10 lists, and so miss out 95% of the games on Game Pass. I think one of the best things about video game subscriptions is finding games you wouldn't otherwise play. But instead of doing something straightforward, like the best hidden gems on Xbox Game Pass, I've decided to rank every Xbox Game Pass game for every genre. But I don't want to keep you here all day when you could be playing these games instead. I want to keep things as concise as possible while still talking the most about the games that I actually like and I think are good. So here's the plan. Going from worst to best, each spot in the ranking earns one extra second for its review. So the first game in this list, which would be rank 33 in this case, has one second while the game ranked first gets 33 seconds. If that idea somehow doesn't sound ridiculous to you, please leave a like on this video so I know to keep going with this series. And if you're new to the channel, which is hopefully the case, if this video is getting some traction on Reddit and I've done my keyword research correctly, um, welcome, first of all, and please subscribe for more of whatever you wanna call this stuff. Every game you're about to see is available on Xbox via Xbox Game Pass. There are also some games available on PC via Ultimate or Xbox Game Pass for PC. Just look out for these two little symbols so you know which is which. And finally, and most importantly, this is just my opinion. You may not agree with the ordering of this list, and that's fine. Um, it may not be perfect, but it sure as hell is comprehensive. Let's get started. Yo, what the f Even in the apocalypse, you have to do your chores. Barely passes as an open world, get it out of my sight. Why don't you do us all a favor, Microsoft, and just put the first crackdown on here? The hack and slasher goes open world with sparse landscapes and no minimap. What a fantastic combination. Hey girl, you know there are 206 bones in the human body? How about one more? Uh, it's here, here you go. A wintry survival sim with a lot of backtracking through the snow, made worse by your measly sprint bar. And, um, there are wolves. I'm thankful for this 8 second time limit because I reviewed Saints Row 4 last week. A decent open world is ruined by this game's childishly stupid and non-existent plot. A victim of Game Pass opting for the most recent entry in a series, I couldn't find any of that sense of urgency or the interesting missions from the first two Dead Rising games in number 4. It may look like a Fallout imitator in terms of style, but Wasteland 2 is a sequel 26 years in the making, meaning the series actually predates Fallout. It's also a turn-based strategy game, so if you like all of that, it's probably worth a try. If Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon had a child, and as some sort of sick joke raised it to be a carpenter, they'd call it Porsche. My time at Porsche's world isn't big, but if you love chopping wood and building things out of it, you'll be right at home here. I want this to be higher because Kingdom Hearts 2 is one of my favourite games ever, but I can't honestly say there's much openness to these games until just before the end. Then you can go back to level up and find bosses, which is pretty much a necessity if you're on proud or critical mode. The first open world that's merely a playground for traversal and tricks, Sunset Overdrive is an underappreciated Microsoft exclusive, in my opinion. Its parkour is quick to learn and great fun, blending perfectly with its saturated, sugary art style. Middle Earth has the luxury of one of the best IPs to craft an open world game in, and Shadow of War is bigger than its predecessor, improving on the Nemesis system, but not quite living up to the infinite gameplay variety that was promised. And the story has as much depth as the Sea of Azov. Astroneer makes exploration rather cute, adding a colourful tint to the black void of space. It's comforting to bounce around without the threat of man-eating fauna and poisonous flora, but that does take some air out of Astroneer's oxygen tanks, more of a space-themed holiday than a survival sim. Arkham Knight doesn't deliver the focused story of Asylum or City, and aside from Batman's inner conflict, personified by the Joker, concludes the trilogy with more of a splutter than a bang. But Gotham looks absolutely gorgeous, especially when careening through its streets in the Batmobile, it's just a shame that you have to spend most of your time in that tank mode. Forza turns simulation into sandbox with the Horizon series, a showcase of beautiful cars and landscapes of, in this case, Great Britain. But not the shitholes like where I'm from, the nice parts. Horizon 4 is an impressively open game considering you can't ever escape from your car. Guess Microsoft put the child lock on, am I right? 
<laughs> put the suicide doors up because I'm ready to kill myself. You ever get that feeling when you're swimming out in the ocean and you think for just a moment too long about the infinitely murky depths beneath you and what possible horrors could emerge and aim straight for your spindly legs and suddenly you realize how defenseless human bodies are in water and it would probably be better to just sit on the beach with a pina colada, I mean beer, large beer. Subnautica made me feel all of that while sitting at my computer screen. This would be right near the end of this list if the Mass Effect trilogy was on Game Pass. The first game is still a fantastic introduction to the series, with a host of memorable, likeable characters and the freedom to explore a whole galaxy. Unfortunately, any planet without missions has you f**k about on the rover, which has all the stability of my first marriage, and the combat is super janky. It's not the masterpiece that is Mass Effect 2, but it's well worth returning to. I did a proper review of this a long time ago, so why should I repeat myself? Um, here's me trying to launch into space instead. There's no Skyrim or Oblivion to be found on Xbox Game Pass, unfortunately, but there is The Elder Scrolls Online, which might be as big as both of those games combined. In terms of sheer scale, this is right up there with the best of them. There are dozens of areas in Tamriel, each acting as their own hub world with quests, side missions, trading, and the usual bits. Add to that a bevy of real players to duel and trade with as well, and there are countless hours to be had here. I won't waste time explaining the concept of Monster Hunter, the title of the game, and what's happening on screen is evidence enough, and Monster Hunter World does not stray one inch from the series' roots, which is f***ing up giant monsters, in case you couldn't tell. The game world is wider and deeper than ever, ripe for exploration, killing monsters, and skinning their carcass so you can buy a ladybird costume for your cat, increasing its stats to help you fight bigger monsters that you can kill and skin so you can buy this costume. This, that one. I, that's the one I want. That one. The Fable trilogy is on Xbox Game Pass, but it's the first game that I want you to care about. It pioneered action and consequence, a mechanic that feels near essential in modern RPGs. It might sound hyperbolic, but I consider Fable a big piece of video game history. The sequel expanded the world while improving much of the combat, and the third kind of invalidated all your previous choices, much like another series in this list. But please, go explore Medieval Albion for a bit. At least with Fallout, the only entry on Game Pass is probably the best of the bunch. New Vegas, the city, manages to maintain a faint buzz of excitement and indulgence, clinging to its stature after the apocalypse. Where New Vegas the game really shines though is its storytelling. A three-way power struggle bubbles under the surface, bending to the will of the player as you build up to the epic conclusion. You know how I just said Fable was a big step for branching narrative? Well, Fallout Vegas is too. Setting sail with your favourite landlubbers in Rare's Cartoon Pirate Sandbox looks at first glance like the start of a grand adventure, but at launch Sea of Thieves had a lot of open water and not much else. Two years of updates has helped Sea of Thieves become the whirlwind pirate tour many hoped for. Most recently, a bounty system lets you maximise profits from selling treasure but makes you a prime target for rival crews, both reducing the grind and encouraging hugely exciting and cinematic ship battles. If you want a sprawling single player campaign, the Final Fantasy series has to be in the mix. On Game Pass you have 9 and 15. In terms of traditional RPG elements like combat and progression, I'd go with 9, but in terms of an open world, 15 scale is unmatched. Travelling through gorgeous landscapes has been a trademark of the series. 15 takes it further by first having all your party members constantly together on screen and second having them constantly interact with each other. Sure, they're goofy as hell, but they feel genuine. I've got 27 seconds available for Yakuza 0, which is just about enough time to explain every minigame on offer. <gasps> play arcade games, play baccarat, play blackjack, play poker, play roulette, play mahjong, play shoji, play darts, play pool, bowl, bat, fish, wraith toy cards, go to the disco, go to a karaoke bar, be someone's phone date, and bet on women fighting. Oh, that was quicker than expected. Well, yeah, you can actually place bets on cat fights. Not that I condone this in any way, for the record. To best describe Terraria's progression, I'll put four instances on screen. Top left is my first two hours with the game. Top right is my current playthrough. Bottom left is from one of the first tutorials I watched and realized how peasantry my world is in the top right. And bottom right is filled with things I've literally never discovered in the game. There are two procedurally generated worlds left that I'm yet to talk about. You could argue Terraria has better progression than both of them from the viewpoint of build better gear to fight monsters. But it's here on the list because I don't feel that same desire to build and create something that's mine. Craft. To compare Minecraft's humble beginnings as a one-man development project to the media transcendent behemoth it is today is like comparing apples to oranges the size of Saturn. The game single-handedly brought the crafting survival genre into existence and even then its popularity was just beginning. Cross-platform play between every console, desktop and mobile device sparked an unprecedented togetherness that is still unmatched 10 years later. Despite its longevity, Minecraft's worldwide recognition stops it getting the top spot on this list, but I mean, you could put this number one and you'd hear no argument from me. 
there are too many examples of Red Dead's astounding level of detail to count. My personal favourite is that the horses take realistic poos. As of right now, it is the pinnacle of immersive world building. Red Dead 2 made me question when simulation aids escapism and when it prevents the game from feeling like a game. Rockstar is so intent on you admiring its world that for practically every mission I felt like a passenger witnessing a series of predetermined events. There are hundreds of other things to do here but everyone is siphoned off from the story. When both are disconnected in that way, I can't put it above the rest. This is how you blend a world and a story to create an epic journey where every step you take has focus. The Witcher 3 is set across several vast, beautiful fantasy landscapes. It has dozens of three-dimensional characters, hundreds of quests and thousands of XP to earn, but they all beat the drum for Geralt's monster hunting and The Witcher 3 quickly falls into its alluring rhythm of track a monster, prepare for the fight and bring back its head as a trophy. There are no frivolous collectibles, no grinding through low-level monsters. Everything has relevance, and that's why you can spend 20 hours in Temeria without feeling like you've wasted one minute. Wait, you're telling me this little game with goofy looking aliens, no cutscenes and no spoken dialogue is better than two of the biggest open world RPGs ever? Yes. I haven't found a story that unfolds as organically as Outer Wilds, a tiny toy box solar system with a sun that goes supernova every 20 minutes. It's a microcosm of discovery and rediscovery, trying to align the pieces before time runs out and you start all over again. If you love open worlds for the exploration, you have to play Outer Wilds. For every 20 minute cycle that seemingly asks more questions than it answers, the satisfaction you get from finally understanding this scene that plays out every time you wake up is so, so worth it. Damn it, I went over my time limit there, but I really love this game and I highly recommend you play it if you haven't yet. And I definitely recommend it if you have played it and you gave up. I think No Man's Sky's defining trait is its ability to cultivate moments of awe. Your first time breaking out of a planet's atmosphere, discovering your first space station, opening the galaxy map for the first time, making contact with new alien life, being chased off planet by sentinels. As the game opens up and shows you its near unlimited scope, you get this feeling of being a tiny, almost insignificant part of a literal universe. I think that taps into this sort of primal, tribe-like state. Not literally, I didn't like start throwing shit at the wall, but I can't think of the last game that made me get existential. As you build a wooden shelter to shield you from a heat storm on the dusty plains of a barren planet, it's like a constant reminder that there's so much out there that I literally, at this moment, cannot see or do. Not until I've added a warp cell, refueled my launch thrusters, and gathered enough supplies for whatever lies ahead. Yeah, the, the time has gone out the window for this one. That makes this game very addictive, but nothing is ever forced on you. There are countless other small, random, and in our case, stupid things you can do from the comfort of your tiny little base on your newly discovered planet in No Man's Sky. No! Oh, it's gonna be close. Yes! Is it to the base? Come on, Jeffrey! So I know I went way over the time limit on that last one, but you know, it earned the top spot, so I think it deserved more than a 30 second review. I've just really been enjoying No Man's Sky, and I think the game has been excellent at making you discover so much despite the fact that we've only explored like two or three, four planets. Um, and I think it's a real testament to the work Hello Games have done since launch, because obviously No Man's Sky had that disastrous launch, and rightly so. But in the few years since then, the game has come on so much, and I'm glad that I was able to... Well, I didn't avoid the hype, I was hyped myself, but I didn't buy the game. And now to wait that much time, and now play it on Game Pass in the form that it's in, um, is really great. I can't speak for the game in single player, and I think maybe that existential thing will be even more exaggerated in the single player mode, and not in a bad way. But yeah, we've been having a load of fun with it as a small four-man space crew. And if you want to see some more of us being um, idiots on Game Pass, I've recently uploaded two Golf With Your Friends videos, which uh, were really popular on YouTube back in like 2016, but it only just came to Game Pass, so we revisited that game and had some fun with it. And if you want to see some Let's Play type stuff on No Man's Sky or any game on Game Pass, just let me know in the comments down below, and I'd love to get some of that stuff going. Also, please let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below, and please be honest. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, so I know, and the YouTube algorithm knows, that, that it's good. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, 
for more content like this on all the video game subscriptions. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later. Goodbye.